In Japan's countryside, Ichigo walks home with his mother on a wet day. The boy notices a young girl dressed in white standing on the riverbank and asks why she's there by herself. Ichigo hurries to assist the girl, as the boy's mother follows closely behind. Tell him to stop the female suddenly turns around, causing Ichigo to swoon. When the boy awakens, his mother is mortally injured while attempting to protect him from the girl turns out to be a malevolent spirit. Ichigo, now a young man, has gotten accustomed to his abilities throughout time. He sees spirits everywhere and helps them whenever possible. When he gets home from school, he discovers a strange woman standing in the room. The woman is astonished to learn she is a soul reaper named Rukia. Ichigo can sense her presence. The soul reaper senses an evil presence nearby, interrupting their chat. Leading Ichigo to run downstairs to see his family he found his sister huddled in the corner after hearing a terrifying voice. An explosion smashes through the walls, and a gigantic hand snatches the girl. Away just in front of the main character, Ichigo runs outside to help his sister, only to encounter a gigantic creature in front of him. The man is easily knocked away, while Rukia charges in and slashes the beast, causing it to drop the girl on top of Ichigo. The woman says that the monster is an evil spirit called the Hollow, which was attracted by Ichigo's extraordinarily powerful spiritual abilities. The creature assaults Rukia with its head, interrupting their conversation. She deflects the beast and narrowly avoids its attack. She attempts to attack, but is immediately grabbed by the hollow as it charges. It stores a significant amount of energy in its mouth. Rukia uses magic to release herself and sends the creature flying away. She falls into the air before landing on a car. Ichigo rushes towards the Soul Reaper and realizes she is severely injured from the previous combat. Rukia informs the man that she needs to impart her death god powers to Ichigo by stabbing. He aims to defeat the beast and save their souls. Seeing the creature's fast recovery after the attack, the guy has no choice. She stabs him with her sword, forcing him to accept her offer. The hollow charges forward to attack, but a shadow slices it and lands nearby behind the huge. Ichigo has attained the power of a soul reaper, cuts off the spirit's arm with a single strike. Despite the monster's frantic onslaught, Ichigo successfully slashes the hollow in the center. The creature is divided in half and vanished from the human world. Ichigo awakens the next day, believing everything was a dream, but is immediately brought back to reality. After noticing a massive hole in the walls, Surprisingly, his family seemed to have lost all recollections from the previous night. He believes it was a truck that broke in. The man attends school as normal, but after seeing his friends in the classroom, he is Rukia, posing as a new student, unexpectedly entered the classroom. The female immediately grabs Ichigo and threatens to murder him if he speaks. Rukia reveals her inability to return to her soul society realm due to she mistakenly transferred all of her powers to Ichigo. She must retrieve them quickly or risk losing her ability to battle hollows and be imprisoned here indefinitely. Rukia uses a special glove to drive Ichigo's soul out of his body. She commands the man to stab her with his enormous sword he release all of his powers into her once more. Unfortunately, the ritual was unsuccessful due to Ichigo's low energy level. Now, to transfer power successfully, the primary must become stronger. He must train to ensure his body's survival Ichigo opposes the proposal, preferring to return to his normal life. When he returns home that day, he discovers Rukia hidden in his closet. She's got nowhere to go. Ichigo orders her to leave, but she refuses and urges the man to accept his decision. Their argument is interrupted by Ichigo's father, who barges in after hearing a woman's voice. He knocks the son away and opens the closet doors, only to see that it's empty inside. The father tells Ichigo to not bring any girls home and warns him about the child supports that he'll have to pay, speaking from the man's own experience after having so many kids. Rukia begins training Ichigo the next day, but the man is barely able to keep up and clearly lacks the necessary motivations. She hands Ichigo a wooden sword and demonstrates kendo for him, but the primary the figure swings the weapon crazily and is unable to land a single strike. Meanwhile, Renji, a red-haired soul reaper, tells his commander Bayakuya that they can no longer find Rukia as it appears like she handed away her abilities because her spiritual force has disappeared. The captain gives the soul reaper instructions to locate her, stating that using one's power to the penalty for a human being is death. At night, Ichigo is heading home from school, but quickly notices a presence following behind him. He tells the Soul Reaper to show himself, and Rinji is surprised that the human can actually see him. The Reaper demands to know the whereabouts of Rukia, but Ichigo plays the fool and tries to protect her, realizing that his friend may be in trouble. 
Renji becomes annoyed at the man's obvious deceit, drawing his sword and rushing in to attack. Luckily, his attempt is quickly stopped by a flying arrow that grazes over the Reaper's head, forcing him to hide and giving Ichigo the chance to escape. The main character goes home and tells Rukia about the other Reaper, demanding to know the truth, but the girl only tells him that he has to train or else he'll definitely be killed. The next day, Ichigo is confronted by a man in glasses named Ishida, who seems to know about his Soul Reaper powers. The man reveals that he also has unique powers just like Ichigo, because he's from a tribe known as the Quincy, who were mostly wiped out by Soul Reapers. Ishida uses spiritual energy to construct a bow, demonstrating his ability, admitting that he was the one who saved Ichigo the previous evening. To protect his people from the Reapers, he commands Ichigo to battle him, but the even when threatened, a man resists. Ishida's only option is to entice Ichigo to engage in combat by luring the Hollows out. Through launching a bait into the cities beneath, Rukia rushes towards Ichigo after sensing the presence of demonic spirits, compelling him to turn into a soul reaper in order to defend the defenseless. As they dash inside the park, they discover the spirit of a youngster he had previously spared being a gigantic spider-like creature is pursuing them. Using his enormous sword, Ichigo charges toward the thing, but the creature is able to move swiftly, preventing him from making any hits. As the monster flees in desperation, the reaper is likewise able to avoid his strikes. From the enormous legs, Ichigo eventually grows weary and lets his guard down, which results in the hollow striking. The reaper is flung across the field by it. Renji, who is nearby, swiftly cuts the monster in half before it can complete the kill. Through monitoring their spiritual energy, he points his sword at Ichigo as he turns to face him and charges forward with amazing speed. In the direction of the man before any reactions take place, Ichigo attempts to strike back, but is swiftly crippled after being knocked flying in the direction of a tree. By a nasty kick to the face, Rukia rushes in and orders the man to stop before Renji can kill him, but this only enrages the Reaper, who finds it hard to comprehend her desire to defend a mere mortal. When Captain Bayakuya stands in front of them and discloses, their disputes are cut off. That in reality, he is Rukia's brother. He insists that the girl remove Ichigo from her position of authority, even if it means murdering the guy, because the Soul Society will only pardon her offenses in this way. Rukia declines since she opposes the execution of an innocent person, particularly because it she was the one who put him in this predicament. Bayakuya gives his sister till the following full moon to win her back after observing her determination, or else they will murder Ichigo. Rukia uses her magical herbs to heal her friend and swiftly returns him to his body. Ichigo, however, is uns certain about their next course of action because the disparity in power is just too vast. Rukia also comes to the realization that Ichigo will never be prepared as time passes, particularly after the harm he sustained in the last battle. She chooses to take a chance and makes a deal with her brother, explaining to him that to entice out the Grand Fisher, a gigantic hollow, they will use Ichigo as bait. Rukia begs her brother to pardon her crimes by promising to destroy the monster. To keep Ichigo alive, the woman begs her brother to grant her desire, but he questions her instead. Devotion to her family. Rukia's persistent disobedience infuriates Renji, who refers to Ichigo as garbage and not deserving of salvation. Ichigo interrupts their disputes by yelling for them to cease after following his pal to their place. He consents to kill the Grand Fisher, but only if they pledge to release Rukia. Renji immediately makes the decision to assault Ichigo, but unexpectedly, his captain intervenes and accepts the offer, thinking the man will be slain as a result. When Ichigo and Rukia start training, he takes it much more seriously than previously, because he wants to demonstrate his abilities and, above all, to keep his companion safe. In a few period of time, the man can significantly improve, even learning how to manage and utilize his spiritual burden as a weapon. Since the monster ought to have picked up Ichigo's, they start searching for the Grand Fisher, a rise in spiritual vitality. After following the traces, the two come upon a massive monster that finally changes into Ichigo's mother was slain by the young girl, suggesting that they are the same thing. Ichigo changes into a soul reaper, slashes its tentacles as it charges toward the hollow. He swung his sword wildly. He charges forward and stabs the creature in the middle, but he quickly discovers that his mother was the victim of the attack, as evidenced by the woman standing in front of him. The monster creates the illusion of the man's inner shame, and he barely makes it out alive. Rukia saved the attack in time. When the hollow eventually takes on its actual shape, that of a gigantic beast, Ichigo to rush in furiously in an attempt to exact revenge on his mother. 
When the two enter the city, the monster pursues them and inflicts massive harm. The Soul Reaper, wiping out all in its path, the beast ravages the entire city by crashing into buildings and flinging people around, as it attempts to eat Ichigo. Despite the Soul Reaper's best efforts, the monster's tentacles are challenging to dodge, to avoid, making Ichigo continuously fight for his life. Eventually, the Hollow manages to seize the man with its claws and attempts to crush the Ichigo continues to fight despite the Reaper's immense weight. The monster is abruptly struck by an arrow, which causes it to fall away from the guy, exposing that Ishida is also available to assist. The Quincy fires a lot of arrows and avoids the creature's assaults, but the Hollow can to easily deflect them. Ichigo rushes at the thing while preoccupied and dashes beneath it, severing it from below. But the bad spirit seemed to have only been enraged by this, as it yells vehemently at the sky, creating a massive tornado. It strikes at both of them, forcing Ichigo to hide inside a bus to avoid the attacks. After pursuing the man, the monster attacks the Reaper from the outside, finally simultaneously raising the entire bus while holding onto Ichigo. Ishida points the arrow at the creature and hits the hollow right with it, on the eye. In addition to tearing the bus to bits out of rage, the beast also gives Ichigo the chance to strike from above and splitting the monster's head, finally avenging his mother's demise. The hollow scream of pain as it hits the ground and swiftly disappears into thin air. In order to check on her friend, Rukia runs over, and Ichigo gives her back, warmth when grinning. But before they can rejoice, Renji, who is present, stabs Ishida in the back, to complete the protagonist in spite of their prior agreement. Bayakuya gives the girl one more opportunity to turn her life around and commands her to murder Ichigo, saying a human should never befriend a soul reaper. Rukia refuses to part with her companion, despite her brother's best efforts to persuade her, resulting in the captain giving Renji the order to destroy them both. Ichigo is forced to defend himself as the Soul Reaper attacks him with the intention of killing him, both Rukia and himself simultaneously. Ichigo cannot consistently repel Renji's swift and deadly blows, so finally sending him hurtling in the direction of the vehicles, however, he can now watch the Reaper's motions, unlike before, which means triumph, a potentiality. Ichigo rushes in the direction of the adversary, and they keep exchanging blows. However, the man is unable to fend off any of the strikes, and is soon compelled to defend himself. Ichigo is thrown backwards and knocked around by Renji, but this time he can throw the opponent away and eventually lands a kick on the Reaper's body. Renji snaps, kicking Ichigo in the face and knocking him down in the process. Away with a destructive blow, the Soul Reaper chooses to unleash his sword Zabamaru in order to finally display his full strength, transforming into the second form and throwing the weapon like a spring at Ichigo. The man, unable to adapt, desperately avoids the strikes as he flees for his life, to the farther distance from the adversary. Eventually, Renji uses his blade to seize Ichigo and throws him away like a rag doll, into the autos and the stacks. After that, the Reaper hurls a car at Ichigo, which explodes violently and burns. Anything that is seen, Ichigo appears out of the confusion just before Renji kills Rukia, to everyone's surprise and gives the Reaper the assurance that he won't be easily vanquished. Ichigo rushes in Renji's direction and blocks the enemy's blows, piercing the Reaper's weapon, causing him to collide with a bus. Bayakuya chooses to enter the battle after realizing that his man has been decisively defeated and informs Renji should back off. Ichigo charges at the captain, slashes him, but the Soul Reaper vanishes before him and uses just two fingers to seize his sword. The man tries to strike once more, but the captain swiftly cuts him in the stomach, causing him to fall. In the direction of the ground, Ichigo surprisingly gets up and launches another assault before the captain departs, but he is cut down with lightning speed once his weapon is swiftly stopped. Ichigo refuses to stay down no matter how many times he falls because he must defend no matter what, Rukia. Bayakuya hits the man in the face one last time because he is annoyed by his obstinacy, throwing Ichigo to the ground again. Despite everything, the man holds on to the captain and tells him that it's not finished. After growing enraged, the Reaper ultimately chooses to murder Ichigo, but Rukia intervenes to save the man by kicking him out and referring to him as a mere mortal. She tells Ichigo she's exhausted and hits her friend to keep him from getting up, frantically attempting to suppress her sobs. Rukia assures her brother that she would be judged for her actions when she returns to Soul Society. Sins, in order to avoid having to murder any more people, Ichigo's power is taken away as the woman stabs herself with his sword. As everything becomes white, the following morning, Ichigo awakens with all of his wounds healed and feels as though everything was a dream. He sees all of his buddies when he returns to school, but he feels that someone crucial is absent. He smiles when he opens the textbook on his desk and discovers Rukia's writings. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, leave a comment about your favorite movie, and we will make it next. Thanks for watching.